How's it going everyone? Sephir here and welcome back to another Tower of Fantasy video. This is going to be day 35 in the Ultimate Guide series and we're also going to include a lot of news here because we have several brand new content events on the horizon and we need to talk about them. There's a lot of important things here. So the first thing I want to do is break down this video for you. We're going to have the news and the important things in the front section. We're going to have a super fast speedrun daily checklist and extra daily checklist followed by the all that after that section at the end so be sure to check those out to help you on your day-to-day -day reminders so let's dive into the super cool stuff so first off we have a lot of announcements including some coming from the official tower of fantasy website that is going to talk about a lot of great things coming in the future so this is the 1.5 patch artificial island features that are coming so it looks like we have a new map of artificial island and the new gameplay that will unlock the housing system which is going to be great as you can see on screen here and then we also have number two the one i'm most excited about new eight player cooperative raids this is absolutely massive i am super excited to get in with eight of my buddies and see how this thing plays out there are roles you're going to need a healer you're going to need a tank you're going to need people pumping out the damage it's going to be a fun encounter and i'm curious what you guys are going to select so i have a poll on my youtube in the community section go check that one out as well because we are taking a sort of like survey to see how many players there are in each category i'm obviously expecting a lot of people to be selecting dps but i need to know who my tank and healer players are because we definitely want you on our team this is going to help quite a lot so finally all those people that have been investing in tank and healer it's going to pay off and everybody's going to be begging you to join their teams while all the dps are going to be stuck and a very, very long line to get into the uh, encounter. So this is definitely some good stuff for the game. I love this. I think it's going to spice up a lot of content, especially for end game. So I'm up for the challenge. I'm down for it. Let's see what it is. Bring it on, Tower of Fantasy. I want to see what you got. Let's get some hard content in here. So after that, we do have some news on Claudia and Claudia's matrices. So that is going to be added to the game in September 15th. They are changing some things around last minute, so things that were data mined and all that might just be out the window, right? We might have to see how Claudia comes in her global state, and I think that's just a way that they're trying to combat uh, leaks and things of that nature. Uh, so th with that out of the way, too, we also have the new limited event. Since the Road of Strife will be going away, we are going to have the Ida Cafe, which is massive. That's really cool, actually. I'm excited to see the Ida Cafe. I'm a big fan of cooking in this game and getting all the ingredients, and I like this sort of profession deal. Uh, so getting that plus a bunch of other goodies like red nucleus and some new uh, cosmetic type things coming in there will definitely be very, very welcomed. So in addition to that, we also have a second thing to talk about, and that's going to be the crow nerfs. There are going to be crow nerfs in the game coming. And we'll go ahead and pop those up here so you can see that. But it looks like it says they fixed an issue where no endurance would be required when using the spiral dive skill. And then used with the Thunderblades weapon, also the damage abnormality. So if you don't know about that, there was issues where Crow's dive was doing like eight times the amount of damage it was supposed to do because it was hitting multiple instances. And it had a bunch of wonky stuff like it was affected by the character's height and you could use a macro to keep spamming Crow dive. All kinds of crazy stuff. Right, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, so Crow will now finally be balanced. So hopefully that will fix everything with him. He's not going to be an unplayable character. I know there's some Doomsday Crow players out there like, it's all ogre. You know, we're just, oh no. It's not going to be like that. You're just going to be welcomed to the mortal realm where everybody is dealing similar damage. So instead of, you know, dealing 200 million in Frontier Clash, you're going to be doing like 50 million with the rest of us, right? Uh, at the max top end, right? And, and you know, slow, lower for the high, lower scale as well. So I think that this is personally good for the game because having one weapon that's like, you know, abusing a bug or a glitch and it's vastly superior kind of invalidates all the other ones. So bringing Crow into the realm of mortality and making it on par with the other weapons makes sense. I do believe that Crow should probably deal a little bit more damage to single targets versus the counterpart of Samir. So keeping a good balance on that will probably be okay. But as we've seen with the performance of Crow in the Bygone Phantasm, which you cannot use the jetpack in, it will probably 
probably still be okay in the term of DPS that he can output. So I think that uh, Crow should be in a decent spot. So I'm just happy to see that overall. What do you guys think? What's your opinions on the Crow nerf? Uh, comment down below. Good? Bad? What do you think? Okay, so now we're jumping into the part about raids. Let's talk a little bit more in depth about that. So resonance for tanks is going to matter. Resonance for healers is going to matter. And if you don't know what that is, you can simply pull up your weapon menu and you can go ahead and switch over here and see your resonance effects. So there are a few types within the game. It's going to be balance, fortitude, attack, and benediction. And that's going to be what you queue as. If you're wondering what you queue as for a raid, go to this match settings button here and you're going to be able to see that you can queue for something. But if you queue for a role, make sure you're equipped to perform that role. So don't queue for healer if you don't have a healer weapon on, um, you know, yada yada so forth. If you can't tank enough damage, don't queue for tank. Because in the long run, that's just going to help everybody have a smooth run. So go ahead and look at that, and then you want to really take into account the weapon resonance effects for solo, but also, more importantly, for team play, because this is going to be very, very, very important. The effects for team play will greatly determine how you perform in these eight-player raids. So if you have the balance ability, you're going to do a little bit of everything. It's going to be like a jack-of-all-trades, but master of none. It can be decent, but... I would strongly recommend you go into Fortitude, Attack, or Benediction, depending on your role, because these will be a little bit more valuable. So the, the deal with Fortitude is that you're going to get massively increased Shatter and Aggro, but you still need to do damage. So tank players, please do not fall into the trap where you're like, oh yeah, I can just be tanky and have a lot of health and do zero damage. That's useless, right? That's useless. You still need to do damage while holding aggro. And aggro works off of a percentage of the damage done to the boss. So if somebody, DPS player, is doing DPS out of this world, even if you're a tank, you're not going to have aggro. You need to keep on par or relative on par with them, and it will be a bit of a struggle because they're doing 40% more damage. So if you're doing this role, make sure you are very well prepared for this role and you have a lot of damage options in your kit to help you perform and get the appropriate aggro and actually effectively tank okay so that's going to be the important part so if you can draw that you're going to get a 45 percent damage reduction which is going to be huge absolutely huge and then the attack role is pretty straightforward i'm sure that a lot of people are going to be queuing for this role this is the damage role if you have two damage weapons, you're going to get 40% increase. So if you're queuing for damage roll, make sure you have two DPS style weapons equipped. Uh, no, you cannot do damage as a fortitude or a balance player. It's just not going to be that good. So make sure you have those in. And then your support players. Lastly, you get 200% healing for having the support. So if you are supporting in a raid, make sure you have like zero and Coco or zero and Nemesis, Coco Nemesis, some sort of combination of that. And if you don't have the characters that's okay pepper is always available for you and she does work wonders so pepper is one of the stronger sr characters so make sure to check her out as well so that's some exciting stuff i think that with the matchmake settings for all of those raids it's really going to shift up the game and i think 1.5 is where the patch is and the game is going to really start to turn on and a lot of people are going to be like Wait a minute, Tower of Fate. Whoa, hold on, you looking pretty good over there. That's looking pretty good. So I'm super excited for all of that. Next, I have a topic I wanted to talk about. What do you guys think about PvP right now? The state of PvP, the 1v1 ladder, the way that the Apex League works. Right, have you been enjoying this? Uh, the way that it calculates the rating mostly? Because that's like a big thing is uh, how how is this top place determined right whoever wins the most at random times whoever has the highest win percent uh whoever beats the strongest opponents what do you think that pvp should be rated on and how do you feel about the 2v2 I, and i know it's a lag fest right now with the road of strife the doubles mega arena it's a really good idea and concept but what do you think about that like 2v2 because me personally you know i've been wanting to start tournament series i've been wanting to shout cast matches like 1v1 
uh, tournament ladder, something like that. And I'm hoping that like in the future we can work with the devs. I've done this in similar games in the past where everybody just gets a prize for participating in the event and, you know, make, make a cool thing out of it. Shoutcast some high matches towards the end and maybe do it on Twitch or YouTube or something like that. It could be pretty fun. Um, speaking of Twitch, we have been working pretty hard on our Twitch channel. So twitch.tv slash Sephir. You can come check that out. We stream every day at 5.30 p.m. EST. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. Would you like to see a 1v1 tournament with prizes? Would you like to see some 2v2 tournaments? Would you like to see some custom match play in the future? How do you think Tower of Fantasy can advance its PvP to make sense? Let me know. Or maybe it's fine right now. Just go ahead and uh, put your opinion down there. So then, once we have that, I did want to point out a sort of a warning on Claudia. Claudia requires a lot of nanofibers to level up. A lot more than the other characters. So be prepared. Start taking a look at that. You can check out like Tower of Fantasy info website. And there's some other resources where you can see what it requires to level a character. But yeah, it's quite a few. So you might want to start prepping in terms of the Stargates, uh, the Dimensional Trials, and make sure you're well equipped because... Level 64 is coming on Thursday, and we are going to get Claudia with that, and you're going to need to level up Claudia from scratch. So I hope that you have the materials prepared. If not, this will give you plenty of time to start cashing in your vitality towards that option so that you can be better equipped to level up Claudia if you choose to pursue her and level her up. And then also keep in mind that level 65 is right around the corner for weapon materials as well, so you're going to need to boost up your main weapons regardless, which is going to require a lot, a lot of materials. So just be aware that you need to start working towards that goal. Following that, we're going to talk about Wormhole, which will be resetting in one day. So make sure you check out the Wormhole because you don't want to miss out on the dust. I believe it's 240 now, if that's, hopefully that's correct. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. I think it's 30 per level uh, times 8. So you will be able to clear that on the endless mode one time before the reset. And it says 17 hours on my screen. So hopefully you're keeping track of that so that you can get your cycle rewards for Wormhole for the week, as well as your bonus for clearing the endless. And uh, trust me, you're going to going to need this gold dust because re-rolling gear right now is super important. It's pretty much the end game thing to do. Uh, so make sure to be keeping track of that so that you're all good and caught up. Then we're going to talk about Void Rifts. So the boss for today is Selly. So if you have not got Selly, go ahead and check that one out. Make sure to not forget it because you're going to want to get those uh, dark crystals and work towards your goal. I forgot Frigg on that day that Frigg was there. I cannot believe it. I was so caught up with streaming and everything. I'm so mad. I'm so cheesed right now. I, I really wish I had Frigg on that uh, on that checklist there, but uh, we'll, we'll get there down the line. <laughs> and then finally, I did want to issue a last warning for the... Road of Strife, because it will be ending in one day and five hours. So make sure that you have purchased everything in the shop, especially the mech bird. You don't want to miss out on that. Make sure you got your red nucleus and all those weapon materials and SR relic shards. Those are super important. So grind like your heart, <laughs> like your life depends on it. Uh, you will be able to completely cap up for all the days you miss. So it is possible. Join the recruitment channel. Do Stargates with other players. Spam doubles Mega Arena. Uh, you know, whatever you need to do to get the job done, get that job done and get everything there. You will also have a little bit of extra star grit left over to be able to use on gold currency. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we have all the important news stuff out of the way, this is the super fast, the new and super fast version of the speedrun daily checklist. So we're going to get into that real quick. So first, you're going to want to do the bounties every single day when you log in. Make sure you get those done. Then the main story. You should be on new chapters coming soon to prepare for Artificial Island. Following that, check your runes and make sure you have done whatever you need to do or saving them for the higher levels. Then your Mia's Kitchen. Make sure you claim all three of those within the day. And then finally, your Vitality. Keep on top of that. Make sure that you're not uh, letting anything go to waste past the 180. Best use Stargates and join up. Then make sure you are level 63 and preferably two-thirds of the way there. That will be the best route for you to be at at the moment. Next is the extra daily checklist. Make sure you do your training. Once you have done your training, head to the Black Market and check out Hopkins for the free daily gifts, as well as Cetus Island for the three times attempt on the claw machine. 
Then you're going to Hycros to collect your machine parts in the farm route circle, and you're going to use those to maintain your vehicles for dark crystals and color mount variants, so make sure you're on top of that because it will be very nice. Then following that, you're going to head to the shop section, and you're going to go ahead and claim your free daily gift as well as your vitality solution for 50 if you're free to play, 100 if you're a dolphin or a whale, and then the 200s for giga whales, so don't worry about that one too much. After that, check out your support points. Make sure you're getting your 1500 support point cap for the day and then collect elemental ore within your world. Once you have finished that, go ahead and work on long-term goals like mounts, vehicle parts, as well as achievements because Artificial Island is coming and you wanna make sure you have everything wrapped up in Asperia. Okay, that was gonna be the super fast version of that. If you need a longer version, check out the previous guides before they have more detailed in-depth explanations of those speed run things. But since they haven't changed, I'm going to speed them up a lot faster and get those done. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. I truly appreciate that. Make sure to comment down below, like, hit the bell button and subscribe to the channel. If you found this information or content useful, we will continue this on this day guide series. We'll keep talking about news and it will evolve more into news in that small speed run section because as time goes on, these gaps are getting larger between levels. So some days there's not that much to talk about. So we'll just keep it as a like, here's the important things and the news type things in the future. And also be aware that I will have have a Claudia video sneak peek of all of her stuff tested from zero to six stars coming out very soon so be on the lookout for that one and a twitch live stream tonight at 5 30 p.m est will be questions and answers at 6 p.m we will be starting the action of gameplay so go ahead and hop over follow the channel twitch.tv slash check us out and come have a good time with us as we prepare for artificial island and Claudia's release that's gonna be it for this one thanks for watching and I will see you in in the next video.